So if we look at the trend across a period now, I'm going to look at period two, that's lithium to neon. And I've looked up the values for the first ionization energies for these elements and pop them in here. I've also drawn a very simple uh, graph just so you can get a visualization of what's happening. It's a little bit more complicated, but hopefully by the end of the video you'll be fine with this. So the first thing to note is the general trend is that the first ionization energy increases going from left to right. So it's obviously taking more and more energy each time in general uh, to remove the outermost electron. So what's that telling us? The outermost electron must be being held more strongly each time. Now you can see there are a couple of exceptions which are breaking the rules slightly. I'll look at them in a moment, but general trend increase across the period. So we'll just quickly explain that before we go into these two anomalies here, boron and oxygen in the case of period two. Remember the three factors that we must include, nuclear charge, shielding, atomic radius. So we'll look at the nuclear charge first what's happening to the nuclear charge as we go across a period well lithium's got three protons beryllium's got four boron's got five carbon's got six and so on so the nuclear charge is increasing the shielding on the other hand because these are all in the same period that means they have the same number of shells so the shielding doesn't change. Now that's really important, and it's really important to say that. So because the shielding's constant, or stays the same, but the nuclear charge is increasing, you've got a greater pull from the protons in the nucleus on the outermost electrons, and so the atomic radius, as a result, decreases. So what's that going to do to the attraction between the nucleus and the outermost electron? It's going to increase it. And so therefore, in general terms, it's going to require more energy as you go across the period. So we'll deal with those two anomalies now. We'll start with boron. So we've got a gradual increase due to the factors we've just discussed. And then it dips a little bit for boron. You can see I've added some extra detail here. That's the electronic configurations for these three atoms. And the reason for the dip in um, our first ionization energy for boron is because we're removing an electron from a higher sublevel. So the 2p sublevel is actually a little bit higher in energy than the 2s, and so it takes a little bit less energy to remove that electron. And then when you get the carbon, the increased nuclear charge kicks in and the energy goes back up. Of course, you've got a smaller atomic radius because of the extra, because of the same shielding. And then when you get the carbon and then nitrogen, you've got the increased nuclear charge factor and the, the same shielding, but smaller atomic radius factor kicks in. And so the trend picks up again and it starts to go back up. If we look at the reason for oxygen now, you can see I've added some extra detail here. So I'll just go through that with you. So as well as the electronic configuration, I've put the electrons in boxes um, representation for the electrons, but just for the outermost electrons, so 2p is the subshell being filled. So in nitrogen, we've got 2p3. And remember, when you fill these orbitals in the subshell, you half fill first before you pair up. So when you come to oxygen, which has a 2p4 configuration, we've got our first paired electron. And this paired electron will experience a little bit of repulsion from the other electron. And so because it's been repelled, it's slightly easier to remove. And so it dips down, so we'll go from 1400 kilojoules per mole to 1310. And then once you get back to up to fluorine, you've got the extra proton in the nucleus, that drop in atomic radius again, and the trend picks up again. 
And just for a point of comparison, I've included the first ionization energies for period three, so that's sodium to argon now. So again, we've got the same trend, the general trend, we're going up in first ionization energy, it's getting harder to remove the outermost electron. And you can see, look, so it's going up, slight dip, up again, slight dip, and then up again. And this is exactly the same reason as before. So in the case of aluminium, the electron being removed is the first from the 3p subshell, slightly higher in energy than 3s, which is where you took that one from. So slightly less energy needed to take that one out. And then when you get the sulfur, which is directly below oxygen, we've got 3p4 configuration. You can see I've drawn the electrons in boxes there. So that's the first paired electron. That little bit of extra repulsion makes it a little bit easier to remove the electron. We'll just summarise with this slide, the trend across a period in general, first ionisation energies increase because of the increased nuclear charge going from left to right. Constant shielding means a drop in the atomic radius and therefore the attraction between the outermost electron and the nucleus gets stronger and the ionisation energy increases, becomes more endothermic. And of course, we mustn't forget the dips for groups three and group six. So the group three reason was it's the first from a P subshell, higher in energy, therefore a little bit less energy needed to remove. And the group six reason was that it was the first paired electron, and that was the P4 configuration. So the paired electron experienced that little bit of extra repulsion, and so it is slightly easier to remove.